One, two, three. Let's get it on, fellas. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lecture Hall, brought to you by Student Union Sports. I'm your boy, Big Hoppo, Bryce Hopwood. How's it going? We got we got Baby Hop out here. We got Harrison Sillings, a.k.a. Twitch underscore 35 on Twitter. We're back week two. Technical difficulties, so you're going to see this tomorrow. You know, a little uh, technology isn't always, always what it's cracked up to be. Got some fun things on the slate today. We have the Hunger Game maps that went the or map Hunger Games map that went viral on Twitter. We have COVID 19s lasting effect on sports. The NCAA Player uh, of the Year debate between Obi Toppin, who won the award, and Luca Garza. This is going to be a big shout out to Luke Myers again. Big takes, <laughs> and the 2020 Olympics being postponed. It's been seven days since I've seen you, sir. How have you been? You know. I've been good. I think it's day 12 of quarantine. Haven't quite lost my mind yet, but I'm slowly getting there. Actually, I wouldn't even say slowly getting there. It's rapidly approaching. So uh, hopefully <laughs> hopefully we can get out of this sooner rather than later. Or by maybe next podcast, I'm going to look like the Geico caveman sitting here itching like I'm coked out or something. <laughs> Luckily, your boy uh, is considered essential working in telecom, so you'd think we'd have no technical issues, but I only sell deal with selling phones, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, as far as myself, it's pretty crazy make, seeing your daily commute just get five minutes shaved off from the whole thing. Uh, I Like I said, Wisconsin fan, live in Wisconsin. Don't let the Miami jersey fool you. It's a brewer hat. It's, there we go, brewer hat. We got the Ryan Braun jersey with opening day, would be opening day starting tomorrow. Um, but yeah, my commute's gone down by five minutes. We have a safer at, uh, or like a stay in place or safer at home uh, order. So, like I said, I'm, be, I'm telecom um, is my technical job. So, I actually have like a, a letter that I have to keep in my car for driving around so that I don't get either a $250 fine or a misdemeanor charged against me. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty crazy, um, but let's jump right in. I'm pretty hyped about this Hunger Games map. We were talking and going and talking, um, so let's let's talk about it. First of all, I live uh, just outside Madison, so I'm right on the edge of that five or six um, spot right there. I'm going to call it five, but I know we both have issues. Where are you at map-wise? What district do you have, Harry? I am in six, regardless of if I'm at school or if I'm at home. School, I'm in Chicago. Home, I'm in Michigan, Lower Peninsula. So I'm kind of chilling in six right now. Feel pretty good about that, too. I think six has a pretty strong case. It's kind of went viral on Twitter the last couple of days. Yeah. I mean, for me, for five, it's like I can either hide out in the corn of Iowa, otherwise I can head up to the UP there. I'm familiar. I've been up there a time or two. Head up towards Superior, Wisconsin, eh, and uh, get up into the UP. We'll be just all right, you know? Pretty isolated. Pretty isolated for the most part, yeah. Um, But, so I don't know. I got, I'm worried a little bit. I don't know. I mean, the other thing is, like, I got way up north, but... We we do have a stretch of water, and I know there's some islands up there. So you know, I just could, I could see us having you know an okay time, my, me and my family trying to figure it out. That's the thing. The six and five up at the UP, no one like no one's there. Like I don't even no. think like the UP people in either like uh, section here would even have to fight. They just sit up there, they drink beer, they hang out at the local bar. If you're on the Wisconsin side, you're probably um, snacking on some cheese curds. If you're on the Michigan side, you're probably not doing much of anything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, so the thing here is, like, too, with the UP, like, at least us being close together, like, where it kind of stinks is, like, the other thing that it doesn't account for is, like, roads. Like, the road that I would have to take Mm -hmm. to get up there, I would have to, I'd have to drive, like, two hours, like, northwest and then the rest straight up um which i would like i wish they could see like the interstate system or highway systems for each state with the with the map but you know just to see how you travel um but that being said like i don't know if like 
like with the Hunger Games, they just elected people to like go fight in the capital in a dome. So it's like I don't know that every like everybody's not taking it like true to Hunger Games where like yeah. People are like, oh, like 10 v 7 and like going in between. Like, no, we actually just all go to the Capitol and try to like two random people just, you know, get elected and go try to obliterate each other. So it's kind of interesting that that Twitter's taking that look on it. I don't know that everybody's like the most educated on Hunger Games, but, you know, whatever. I think it's just a better narrative if you're assuming this is last district standing everyone v everyone just go into town it's it'd yeah, be but, a more, it's just more entertaining to talk about that way yeah definitely well and like we were talking about like when you look at like section or, or section 10 oh <laughs> red Sox guy shout out jared Corrales. What up, what up section 10 in the building <laughs> let's go um yeah so like you have the 10th district like no people and then we were talking about how like the 11th district has like almost like you have like i said i'm pretty sure nashville falls in there you have atlanta you have every major city in texas like population wise like they're just not like fair either i mean obviously there's 350 million people or whatever in the united states so like i mean it's every man for himself anyways like you said if we're just looking at it but like I mean that's that's a lot of fucking Oklahoma City. That's a lot of people. So yeah, so like I don't know. That's their map. Yeah, like uh, what are these called? District Eleven needs to be just cut in half, like where the nine kind of dips down and then like straight down to cut off part of four there. Like yeah. it just needs to be basically like Texas, that top half of Louisiana. What is that? Arkansas, maybe. I'm gonna test my yeah. geography. That bottom corner of New Mexico and then Oklahoma, like that I section mean, you're eleven. Talk- Throw in. You're talking geography with the seventh grade geography B champion for the Mount Horror uh, Middle School. So <laughs> I can talk geography all day long, baby. Yeah, but then throw section twelve in, and that which would be the east which is half like no, of there's no section eleven. I don't know. I guess okay. I guess like you got probably Baltimore and DC, but like there's like nobody there. Atlanta, than, like in no in twelve. Oh, 12. Yeah, Atlanta would be... Oh, yeah, would Atlanta be in there? Oh, there already is a 12. Whoops, make that 14. I'm kidding. That the Once we cut 11 oh, and a half, see. make that 14. Yeah. 11 make... Okay, I see what you're saying. I was. I had no clue where you headed. I but, had yeah. 12 cut off my map. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, like, we were talking, too, about, like, Alaska and Hawaii just don't have a color. So, do, are they fine? Are they not yeah, they included don't count. in this? There's not enough people there anyways, and I don't think – well, the Alaskan people could probably last a while, but – They like, to Russia. You just can't get to them. You can't get to them. So it's either they're moving uh, to the mainland or they're just out of this and we give them to Canada, which the, honestly – The Alaskans are going to be survival experts. I'm just chiming in real quick. Um, they, that, that's a great point there, Harrison. They're just going to wait it out. Uh, but then you got to think about, you guys mentioned it, but for the rich rednecks down on the coastline, um, you got to be careful about them because they're, they're like 11 in the sense that they have the guns, but they probably got a little more brains about them and they've got the heavy duty equipment. Um, so they, they have the ability to cut off the exports, of the whole Southeast and kind of, kind of kill 11 tactically. So keep that in mind, but that's, but- that's my take on it. And then you look at uh, six and nine. <laughs> nice. Um, have you ever been nice. to in- Indiana or Kentucky? Everyone's on meth there. They're basically superheroes. Plus, there's plenty of guns between Indiana and Kentucky. So, you know, I didn't see you guys redneck like... superheroes with guns. That's an army that you don't want to mess with. Yeah, I did see one guy on Twitter was like, they have Chicago, Gary, Indiana, and like some other, or like, uh, I think it was like Columbus or something like that yeah, in six, there. And I, six has Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Chicago, Gary, Detroit, Flint, Grand Rapids, Columbus, Cleveland. Oh yeah, you know how hard Grand Rapids is. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing out some cities. They just they have all I'm not gonna say it, but 
<laughs> you can get us in trouble. <laughs> Watch I didn't monster. say anything. We were worried about that's you true. getting us in trouble, and here I go. They could uh, fight. District 6 could fight. District 9 is just full of meth, so I don't know. I think 9 has a really good chance. 1, 2, 3, 10, 7, forget about it. They're they're out. 11, well, like, solid case. Yeah, 1 for sure. I mean, it's basically important part of California. Well, like Liam said, though, if, if 4 can cut off like supplies from 11 and hypothetically we cut 11 and a half and may put a district 14 in there. You'd have to think that once 11 starts getting farther, like Northeast, they're not going to make it through the cold. No chance. No chance. No chance. If we're doing this well, in like, like early February, no chance. Well, like, and here's the thing too, is like you mentioned like the, you're like the, the capital is just like kind of like, in, in the middle of nowhere spot. in the just like literally in the middle of nowhere like so are and like the other part of this too that we like haven't mentioned or like have been thinking about is like do you do we fight to get to the capital or like or are we just like last man standing wins because like like what's the point of having the capital especially out in the middle of bumfuck so <laughs> i oh, hey this is might be an obscure reference but have you ever played on the PSP, NBA 09, the inside. Can't say I have. There was a game mode on there. It it's was obscure. <laughs> it was just like this, where it was every NBA city, and you had to, like, you were playing 5v5 against, like, every team, and you could only, like, go from, like, one city over, and you're trying to conquer the whole map. I think you're trying to claim as much territory as possible. Because, like... You're trying to get to the point where you're too big to fail, I think. Because if you hide out, eventually everyone's going to come to you. And by that time, people have, like, gathered. So if we're saying that's the objective, just for the sake of moving the show along, so we don't talk about Hunger Games the whole time, <laughs> you guys is outright winner. Who are you taking? And what do you oh, think what? the value is on your bet on who you're taking? I'm taking my messed up superheroes and nine. <laughs> but six is the hard one for me to bet against just because that's home. I think we've got a lot going for us. Also, all, all the states that have mountains, though, make it tough because you can just hide out in those mountains. And plus, you have to get over the mountains then. Yeah. 11 has to well, be like, the odds favorite, though. Yeah, odds probably like minus 180. <laughs> Not an odds maker, but if I had, if I had to. But like, so... And for, like, me and five, like, I would probably cross over into ten, cross through northern Minnesota, because I can trek through that. I'm a big snow guy, so I can get through there. And I might just hide out in the mouths of Mount Rushmore. So, like, I don't know. Like, see, that's where it's tough for me. I would I would say 11 is probably the winner, but at the same time, I'm pretty, I'm more of just like survival of the fittest. I got a family to think about. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not my... fighting in this. I'm You're hiding not. out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding out till I have to, just how I play Call of Duty. That's why I'm not good at Call yeah. of Duty. God, I suck. All right, switching over, let's head to COVID-19, the lasting effect it'll have on sports. I don't know about you. I did listen to um, Frank Kaminsky's podcast, Shout Out Badgers. Uh Hate Frank oh, Kaminsky. Hey, I love the guy. As a so, Purdue you know. fan, I hate him. As a Charlotte Hornets fan, I hate him even more. Dude sucked. Oh, no. You need to go listen to his podcast, and you'll give him a little bit more of a shot, I bet. As that a basketball player, said, I can't stand the guy. Anyways, we can save that for another time. <laughs> um, he did mention on his, <laughs> on his podcast that – uh, they were possibly thinking that they had some meetings coming up and they were possibly thinking like June. And then uh, one of his co-hosts asked the question, like how late before you just say end the season? And he said July. So it'd be pretty interesting. And like the question of shortening the season, I mean, we have baseball, like I said, go crew uh, and that kind of stuff. So I don't know. What is your, I mean, we can just kind of hop into a couple sports because I, I don't know how much football, Football is going to be too affected, but like, talk about the like, give me what your take on the NBA is as far as what you think they should do with their season. It's like 
the NBA and the NHL are almost in the same boat where their seasons start at the same time, their playoffs coincide with each other. And if you're resuming the season where it's at right now in, say, the end of May, early to mid-June, when the right. by the time your playoffs are over at the end of July, early mid-August maybe, I don't know how, much, how many games are left in either – by the time you're done, you're have it's basically just a wraparound where you're you're getting half of your off season right now, and you're gonna get half of it again, and then you're right back into training camp in a couple weeks. It's right. just in terms of like their how their bodies hold up. If that's the route things go, next year is going to be we're gonna see some piss poor performances next year in the NHL and uh, NBA. I think if that's the route things go, just because. Guys are going to get tired. They're going to be so exhausted come playoffs next year. Just because they don't get yeah. that full extended rest, they're getting half of it going back to the playoffs, the most grueling part of their season, and then back to training camp in just like four or five weeks afterwards. Yeah, I don't know. I love – I'm a big hockey guy. Go Maple Leafs. Uh, oh, and come so, on. What? Bruins. Bruins all day. And you can't even you can't even talk crap. I like it. I need to talk to you about this then. So we I can, we'll continue with my NHL take because I don't need to talk to you about <laughs> fandom. This guy. Um, so as far as like the NHL and the NBA, I think you're gonna have to just at the end of the day, I think you're just gonna have to shorten it. I mean, I know as far as for like the NBA, I mean they've been talking about shortening the season just in general. So I could see them going to. Um, you know, finishing out doing like 10 instead of the last 20 games that most teams had. Do half of that. Do a, like abbreviated playoffs where you're doing probably five games a series or so. And then um, just start start the season late in November, December. Um, with hockey, it's interesting because like, like you said, I mean, it's so grueling come playoff time. Um, but they've never really... They have the same. They play eighty-two games, just like the NBA. So, mm -hmm. like, it, and they have like relatively the same like kind of structured schedule. So it'll be really interesting. But no, because nobody ever. I mean, I would argue that probably the that hockey is probably the tougher sport to play. That being said, like nobody has ever asked, or at least that I'm aware of, like for shortening the NHL season. So I don't know. No. Maybe, maybe the NBA shortens their season. They get a little soft. And the NHL just says, hey, man, grip it and rip it. Save pucks and put them in from the blue line, eh? You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, just be what the answer is. Yeah, like, NHL guys aren't going to complain about it because that's just the nature of the NHL. But come next year's playoffs, assuming that everything goes how we just said it's going to, they're, oh, my gosh, they're going to be dead. Next offseason is going to be first ballot Hall of Fame offseason for these guys. Yeah, I mean, I could I could see a situation, too, where maybe for hockey, maybe you start a week or two later in the season, um, start training camp a week or two later, and then go make the all-star break like 10, 10 days to a week or, or to two weeks or like a little bit longer than normal, maybe two and a half weeks or so, and then – get back into the schedule and just bump it back a couple of weeks where the NBA is talking about like a full month. I mean, and obviously we don't know, like, like I said, I have no clue. Like my job could get shut down. We, as far as right now for the state of Wisconsin, our order is in place um, until April 24th. So, I mean, you have to think about like, does that, does that account for like the Milwaukee Brewers and Milwaukee Bucks where they wouldn't play be able to play until the 24th but then maybe the NBA decides that um, the best option for them is to go no fans and only essential staff and now they're playing you know on April 30th but our order gets extended to May May 20 or the end of May May 24th would be the another month date so it's really interesting, and, and like like for baseball, I mean, are they going to try to play 162? People have been asking for a shorter season there, but it doesn't seem like they have they really care about that. They just want to shorten the games rather than the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baseball, they're saying June start, World Series uh, in November in on neutral sites just because how cold it could get. Say you're playing in Boston or in the Bronx or 
yeah. the Mets or even like Wrigley in November is going to be brutal. So I yeah. think they're talking about playing in like Miami or even probably LA Dodger Stadium maybe. Yeah. Which I don't like that out I mean, at all. Neutral site World Series games. I mean, at the same time, it's like, I mean, what other option do you have, though? It's like, I mean, obviously you could, I mean, there's there's also a situation in a scenario where the favorite coming out of the, out of the NL is the Dodgers anyway. So, like, then do you have to make a neutral site or are you just going to let them be the home team if they get it and then make somebody else play their home games in Texas or in, you know, or in Miami or whatever? So, like, I don't know. I mean, that's just got to be figured out. And obviously, like, that's just a crazy situation. We were we were actually at uh, the UW hospital today um, for my girlfriend, and it was it was just an insane scene. She had to go through through like this is an appointment we've had set up for a while, and she had to go nothing nothing too too worrisome, but um, nothing nothing with COVID nineteen or anything like that, but. Um, had to go through like three checkpoints. I mean, people in face shields and like long medical smocks and that kind of stuff. So we got, I think we got a full taste of it today and we're pretty, we're pretty terrified. So, I mean, like, I, I mean, just anything can happen out of this. It's just the human mind wants answers. And at this point we just don't have any, the do- the doctors, the smartest people just, we just don't have answers and that's what, what we're all craving. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's definitely crazy. The world without sports is just a tough place to live. I think it definitely shows how important sports are, how important sports fandoms are. Just you never really realize how much that means to your life, even when you're an avid fan yeah. until like it's totally gone. Oh, for sure. I mean, even I mean, I, I knew that sports dominated my life, but I'm less like, oh wow, like I really like. Maybe I should find another hobby because like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like looking for things to do at this point, and I just don't know like what the best route to go is. So, yeah, yeah. try not yeah, to become though, you know. For me, it's a great year for this to happen. Other than the Bruins, probably were on the path to win the Stanley Cup. Who knows what happens now? But with Purdue basketball, not they weren't going to make the tourney. This is a great year for me. IU doesn't make the tourney now because there isn't one. Purdue doesn't make the tourney. It's just a it's a wash. We have two studs who redshirted. It is like it doesn't matter now. So, so happy for that. Yeah, My well, biased you know, fan take. You know, and you mentioned. I mean, you mentioned like like Purdue basketball. If we want to talk Big Ten, I mean, we have you know based off of last week, we have ideas for Wisconsin twenty twenty ESPN BPI national champion. So watch out for those. Those might be coming to the market. Like, I mean, it's nice to be crowned. It's nice to, in this world of not knowing anything, to just be a champion. So, you know, at least we got to go out with that. You know, it's just, uh, what do you do? I mean, you can't, you just, you see, you get the games on the schedule. You get the, you get the places, the times to play. You show up and play and you win games. That's all we do. So I don't know. What to, I, I don't know what to say. Won the big 10. I mean, was it going to be the number one seed in the tournament? Too bad we didn't get to win both of them. It's just too bad. But, hey, what do you do? Um, speaking of college basketball, though, uh, we can talk about the player of the year, Obi Toppin. He is our truly <laughs> best player of the NCAA 2019-2020 season. <laughs> Again, <laughs> the 2019-2020 truly most outstanding player was Obi Toppin from Dayton. Mm. Oh, truly a hard seltzer. Go get the lemonade pack. It's my favorite. <laughs> and Obi Toppin <laughs> wins the Player of the Year award over Dayton. Um, and we're gonna get a lot of flack. We're gonna talk a lot. We're it's been I've seen Iowa tweets because I have to follow big takes because he's a friend and he needs he needs support when he can get it. Um, that being said, um, you know stat wise, Luca Luca was better and plays in the better Luka conference, better. But, but Obi Toppin played on the better team. 
And that's just a fact at the end of the day, regardless of conference. Okay. If you put Iowa in, what are they, the A-10? Is that where Dayton's at? Iowa's winning that conference 10 times out of 10. I, not this year, though. Like, I don't, I don't if, know that if that's If Iowa played at the A-10 this year, they run the table. I don't know about that. Luke I don't know up, that's true. Luca's putting up almost 24 and 10 in the Big Ten. Put him in the A10. He might be putting up 35 and 15. Oh, that's a stretch and a half. <laughs> He's not going to put up 11 more points. That team, if you, if, I mean, granted, we don't have the conference championships to go up, but that team or that conference and the Big Ten could have ended up with very similar numbers as far as 20 win teams. Dayton did go 18 and 0. Um, in the conference, I mean, sec- second was Richmond at fourteen and four. They went twenty four and seven on the year, beat the Badgers. Like I was early in the year when the Badgers were the Badgers quite yet, but like twenty nine and two. Your only losses being to a Colorado team that was the NCAA team, or it was going to be a tournament team, and uh, that's a buzzer beater. And then uh, a loss to Kansas. That I mean, in the let's see, at the end of November, um, in overtime. Like I don't, I don't know, like absolutely throttled Georgia. That team didn't quite end up being what we thought it was going to be. But, like, I don't know that you can, like, I don't know about just run away with it, beat St. Mary's, who is probably going to be a tournament team or could be close. Um, I mean, you just, like, I don't know how you can argue with that. All these teams are tournament teams or borderline tournament teams because they're not playing anyone. And when they are playing them, they're losing. Iowa played four top 25 teams in their last five games. Luca put up 24 and 6, 20 and 9, 25 and 17, 26 and 12 and 28 and 8. Okay. And yes, he has the better stats, but they still went 11 and 9 in the conference and they they're won... playing in a much harder conference. But then okay, but then even like look at the they lost to a DePaul team who wasn't any good, who but ended DePaul up showing the start of the season off hotter than anyone in the country at that time second game of the season i mean paul was what were they they were like 11 and 0 or 8 and 0, something and, stupid to start the season it ended up dead last in their conference but that's what you're talking about with like wisconsin when that early season lost to who richmond it's wisconsin wasn't wisconsin then depaul wasn't at, the depaul that finished the then they were the hottest team in the country i don't the only okay. way for me to decisively say that Obi Toppin and Dayton are so much better than Luca Garza and Iowa would have been the NCAA tournament just to see what Dayton does. And obviously we don't get that, so this is all going to be speculation. But in my eyes, because of who Garza has to play to get the numbers he has and who Obi Toppin's playing to get his numbers, Luca Garza is by far the better player. And he obviously means more to Iowa than Obi Toppin means to Dayton because Iowa went, what were they? What was Iowa's record? 20 and 11 with Garza. You take Garza off that team, they're not sniffing 500. Obi Toppin off of Dayton, they're probably still relevant in the A10, probably still uh, winning their conference. But he didn't really do that much, though, at the end of the day. Like, he, I mean, yeah, he has really nice numbers like that. I'm not going to take that away from him at the end of the like, But, I mean, truthfully, like, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I mean, Crutcher averaged 15. They had four guys with 10, averaging 10 a game. He was their leading rebounder. So I don't know I don't know that that's necessarily true. Like, like, they have some dudes, yeah, but that doesn't mean, like, that he's just the guy. I mean... I don't know. Like, it's just I, like you said. It's all it's all pretty much speculation. It's so hard to say. And I mean, obviously, you have like the difference in conference, but like, I really like. Uh, I just think when you're talking about the player of the year, you're there's a re- like there's a reason they were third in the country at the time. And I, as much as I think probably like um, I don't I don't want to butcher his name, but um, the Kansas. Kansas guy. Oh yeah, I'm not even attempting that one. 
Yeah, I'm not even going to try to butcher it. But, like, even him, Producer like, note, I can't even say it. Sorry, guys. We need Cody on. Yeah. He or, won't. no, not Cody. What was it? Patty? Patty's the Kansas guy. Yeah, Patty's our big Kansas guy. He's more of a KU football guy. But, uh, like... Totally relevant. <laughs> it's, it's really too bad. They probably give up as many points in football as they do in basketball, so... Uh, <laughs> um. I'm gonna try. Ready? Azubuki. Buki. Oh yeah, Azubuki. Yeah, we'll call it that. I mean, to I mean, Ty, Dotson was actually. I mean, Buki had 13 and 10. Dotson averaged 18, four and four with two steals a game on 46 percent from the floor. So I don't know. I don't know. Like, it, it's just really too bad, like you said. I mean, the tournament would have been the deciding factor. I mean, you have to imagine though that like Dayton's the better, like the better team still, and they probably have the, an easier road to go further. I mean, I can pull up, I can pull up what Lenardi had. Um, Iowa is sneaky good, though. Anyone in the Big Ten really is sneaky good on any given day. They're gonna play- minus like the bottom half. The bottom like quarter. They, they were gonna so per per Lenardi's like matchups that he put out, um Iowa as a six seed was gonna play eleven East Tennessee State. I I bet they lose that game because if they don't shoot well from three, they're done for. They lost a game on the road to um Nebraska where they went like four for twenty two from three. So I don't think that you can like like I don't think you can bank on them being sneaky good. I mean, they went eleven and nine in a conference that, yeah, absolutely piss pounded each other night in and night out. But I, I truly don't think that that Iowa team is that good. I mean, like, I don't know how you can like respectively like. I don't know. I don't know how you can. I, I just don't know what to believe with that team, especially like with some of the seedings that Wisconsin teams have seen in the past, like. Like you're gonna tell me that we we're basically gonna have like as far as the Big Ten like f- like let's see four probably like six or seven teams maybe eight teams in the Big Ten go to the Big Dance and then but all be between like basically like four and eight seeds like I don't I think the conference is a lot stronger than that so that's not necessarily uh, an accurate representation so I don't know I don't know for me when it comes down to like these kind of awards the, like. It comes down to how the how the award is phrased. Like in baseball, you have MVP, most valuable player. Who who was the most out of the best players? Who was the most valuable to that team? Is totally different than if you word it as player of the year. Because to me, player of the year means who was the best player. And if you look at the numbers, Luca Garza yep. was the best player. If it was MVP, then I think. Obi Toppin has a stronger argument for like who's more important, even though I said Luca Garza is more important to Iowa, and I will stand by that. I think it just comes mm-hmm. down to how it's worded. And to me, Luca Garza is the player of the year, the best player in the country. Yeah, I mean, I understand. And that's where, too, it's like, Obviously, the MVP award a lot of a lot of times too gets played into well, how good like best player on the best team like does that make sense and that kind of stuff. So there's it's a lot of like with the English that that is already a confusing language that like how do you decide that you know kind of thing. And so that's where it's tough too is like like you said. I mean, yeah, if you're if you're going by the words and the verbiage, like I said, Garza put up the best numbers. I don't. I mean. The other half of that too is it? Yeah, he's the be- he was the best player this season, but he's also like not going to be the number one draft pick. Like you know, like there's things about his game that are still like need to be changed and that kind of stuff. Like I saw a video of him still in the gym, um, and working on things and that kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah, he's going to get drafted, but he's like, I don't think anybody's talking about him being like a lottery pick. So yeah, he put up pretty crazy numbers, but like. Obi Toppin is going to be a lottery pick. Luca Garza is not at the end of the day. So it's like, yeah, Luca has the better numbers. Toppin is right there, though. But Toppin's probably going to go in the top five as far as the draft. So, like, player of the year wise, like, he had really good numbers. He has, like, the titles and that kind of stuff. 
on one of the best team on the top a much better team than that at least per the associated press um so you know i don't know it's it's really tough to make and come down to a final decision i think but also what it tells me is that people have this vote in their mind um pretty clearly um even without the tournament it would have taken a lot for luca to to win so I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of like where they're going to get drafted, but I don't think that factors into who was the better player of the season. I just don't. I get the argument for why Toppin is player of the year. Like no disrespect to him, the dude's a stud. Obviously, he is a top five pick uh, in the draft. But I just like the disrespect Luca Garza's getting. I don't even think. I think they said. What was he? Was Toppin the un- unanimous AP player of the year? Like the disrespect to Luca Garza, not even like putting him in that consideration. I don't know. I don't, I, truth be told, I don't know like specifically or not whether or not he was the, was, uh, Toppin was unanimous or not, but, um, let's see what John Rothstein had to say. Um, off the top of my head, I have no clue, but, I don't know. It's so tough. It's just so tough with no tournament to oh. to see like who who steps up on the big stage because that's that's also important. I think we need a Luke Myers response video to this once this goes live. <laughs> I think uh, we've just... said everything that we could say, but I need to hear that crazy corn guy's take on this. <laughs> He'll have a response whether we let him or whether we don't. He'll he'll find a way <laughs> to make a response. It might be on his own podcast, but um, hey, if he wants a war, oh, I'm here for it. I think this is the first time I've ever backed him on one of his takes. So, <clears throat> Luke, we'll team up on this one. I don't know if you should get too used to that, but I'll back you on this one. <laughs> All right. So I'm not I'm not seeing anything about specifically. Like specifically um, voted unanimous, but um, the 2020 Olympics were <laughs> unanimously postponed. So that really sucks because I'm a huge, actually a huge Olympics guy. I'm a I'm more of a winter guy at the end of the day. Um, but I was really excited for um, just some of the. I mean. The whole nationality thing is just so fun um, when it comes to the Olympics. So I am pretty truly disappointed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think this this could be a really cold take on my part. I don't really know. But I think pushing the Olympics back a year and giving them another year of training can only make these guys better, right? like another year to train for the biggest competition of their life. Like obviously four years is a lot of time, but give them a fifth year. I don't know if that's going to have any effect on the outcome of things, but in my brain, that makes sense. Especially like when you look at golf and how like, eh, Tiger has played this year, you give him a fifth year to like fully get his back healthy again and then let Tiger come out. And are you saying we should like throw an ostrich on that? Like, no, no, not star an next to, on it, but like, like, I just think it could make the competition like better overall. I agree like, I don't that. know if they're gonna just like, like the people who have already qualified. If like all the qualifying is already done, which I assume it's not because those weren't until like July. But like, I don't know. Like, do they keep those guys, or if everyone's got to like requalify? Because like, obviously, it could screw some people if like someone starts training harder and gets faster than someone who gets complacent where they're at. But like. I don't know. I think right. competition could overall get so much better because they have a fifth year to rest slash train. Well, like they're never uh, going to get a fifth year to train for this again. Well, like that being said, is like if you move back the Olympics, like like you said, I mean the competition between even people, like there are competition for spots on teams, and like that alone, like can be a person's paycheck or like their big break and like the people that have earned it to this point like i don't know like that would be pretty tough especially because i mean 
now we've seen professional athletes have COVID-19 and that kind of stuff. And like, especially when you look at it on a global scale, I mean, like I can't imagine like France or Spain or Italy would like, or I mean, I, I don't know about China. I mean, they got a pretty big population, but like, I don't know about their ability or if they even would want to send athletes. Mm-hmm. So like, obviously that might not, obviously we don't, like I said, I mean, it's all a huge question mark and the human brain wants answers, but like at the end of the day, we don't know how long it could take. So, I mean, even if we push it back a year, like France might be like, or even, or I guess Italy would probably be the better, better describer just because they have like, they've been hit one of the hardest is like, they just like, they might not want to send anybody. And then that's, that could be something that pulls you out of a slump or not as a country and a whole uniting thing. Um, So I think, it's certainly like an interesting thought. And I mean, the other, the other thing behind that too, is like, we expect the Olympics every four years. Like this isn't something that like, that like we just like have like going on, that like happens occasionally, like a Haley's comet type thing. Like, no, this is scheduled. Like we know what's going to happen. Places get picked. They get financially ready. They build you know, massive complexes and that kind of stuff. And then it's like, oh, now we're pretty much at a grinding halt. So it's an interesting thought. I don't know that, I don't know how all that stuff works, obviously, but like certainly an interesting thought. I don't know. I don't know on how well you can pull it off, but. Yeah. My next thing would be like, do they keep this on like a four year schedule afterwards? So we're going odd year Olympics from now on, or are they going to give them three years to train for the next one to put it back on like the even year schedule? Yeah, that would be, that'd be interesting. Cause I know like qualifiers and that kind of stuff, like, yeah, like they start pretty much like after, after like, like a year after the Olympics is when they usually start like kind of getting everything ramped back up again. But you know, it's just, like, it's crazy time to see. I also don't know, like, with some sports, like, with what you're saying, like, do some sports get better? Like, because I feel like with, say, like, sand volleyball or, like, something like that, like, everybody knows pretty much where you're at at this point. You're either, like, you're you're either good, as good as you're going to get or you're going to get worse just because, like, time, you know? Yeah, I, I was thinking more from specifically the golf perspective just because I yeah. am a golfer. It's like the guys who are in, what did we bring? Three guys? I think we bring three guys. We brought Kuchar, Patrick Reed, and, or no, maybe it was Bubba, Kuch, and Ricky, the last one. Like, uh, Like, the guys who are top three in qualifying right now, like, that could change, like, in a tournament for golf. So it's like, I just, I don't know. And then, like, from a track's perspective, like, guys get, faster like over the course of like their training like depending on what kind of training they do like are they going right. to just start like a really long taper are they going to get back to like the intense stuff before they try to like taper down again i don't know i think there's the potential for it to be like better competition because of this i could also see why it would be so much worse all i know for sure is that like the opening ceremonies for these next olympics are probably going to be like the mark of like hey like we got through this like it's over. Let's go. Cause it's every country, everyone's affected. It's a worldwide thing. It's going to be every yeah. country in one spot. And that's just going to be a cool moment to watch. It'll be really, it'll be really interesting, especially like if it ends up being Japan in a year, maybe, I mean, still maybe even this year and that kind of stuff, or if they have to wait till the winter Olympics for their, that to be the next Olympics, but certainly all eyes will be on that country. And you have to imagine that everybody like, the global feel that the Olympics have all eyes will be on it. And you will have to just like, you have to put on such a good show for that because if you don't, people are just going to rip, like rip Mm -hmm. everything shreds and it's going to have to be everybody included. Like not just like how it's normally like something like from that, the host country's culture Um, and that kind of stuff. It's going to have to be something like global. You're going to have to incorporate the rings, that's for sure, and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's just trying times at the end of the day is what it is, and it's really unfortunate that that, that it's just what it is, you know? So Beautiful. Yep. Deal, fellas. Um, wrap it up here in the next, like, three to five minutes. You can do it sooner if you want, later if you want, but um, 
we're we're getting to that point of like fifty minute range where it'll turn into a tough video. Sounds good. Yeah, we let's just wrap it up. Um, but yeah, so a lot of serious talk on this one. Hopefully next week we'll have some some more updates. Hopefully have some hope, a glimmer. Otherwise, you can always hit me on the PlayStation. I'm playing MLB The Show 20, acting like everything is normal. Uh, hit me, download MLB Tap Sports Baseball 20. Uh, that one's I'm in on that, that too. I'm in on that too, Hoppa. You're fucked. I got you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're so done. I got a five star. Like, oh, dude. I, I'm loaded, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to watch out. Hit me, pay. you probably pay for like tokens and packs and stuff. I have a kid; I can't afford anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just I'm out here grinding. Big hop of 32, come get me on MLB Tap Sports. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Let's start something. You know, just I'm looking for a debate anytime. Probably not Obi Toppin, especially if Big Takes is involved, but. I will say, hit me at Beastie Hops uh, on Twitter. That's that's where you can reach me, Harrison. Uh, at you Twitch, Twitch underscore thirty five. Uh, Haley Cruz, if you're watching, DM me, please. Uh, we're gonna get these Haley Cruz fan club shirts live at our store sooner or later. Just gotta figure out, you know, the design I want. It's gonna happen though. That's we all got, I have to say. <laughs> we got Haley Cruz. <laughs> The simp. Listen to the simple <laughs> big time <laughs> simp. Uh, so we got Haley Cruz fan club shirts. We got Wisconsin 2020 BPI Natty Champs. Uh, hopefully coming out soon. Uh, a lot more. Hopefully, you know, we're just gonna see where this one goes. We're gonna keep the show trying to roll it out every Wednesday. Um, again, this year's 2020 truly exceptional player. Goes to Dayton's OB Topham. Go go get truly at your local store. Be safe out there. Truly hard seltzer. Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs>